have five minutes left, so I'm going to try to go quick. I don't want to hold anyone here later than we need to be. Um, so I'm Joy Thielen, and I'm going to talk about Facebook. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Facebook. This is an example of Bill Gates. It's not real, but I thought it was kind of funny. But um, Facebook is a crazy, fun, virtual phenomenon, but is it really all good? There are actually a lot of negative effects that Facebook has had on society that you probably haven't even noticed. Um, I say this because I am an avid Facebook user myself, and I didn't realize any of these negative effects either. Um, so real quickly, I'm going to give you an overview on Facebook for those of you that aren't familiar with it, which I doubt very many of you. But um, then I'm going to tell you about three negative aspects involving privacy, relationships, and grades. So, um, Facebook is a social networking site, as you can all see, that has become huge with the mission to make the world more open and connected, um, quoted by the CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. Users can post statuses, photos, comments, videos, messages, as you can all see. Um, it's similar to Twitter or MySpace, except it's way better. Um, it was originally intended for college students to stay connected and keep in touch during their busy semesters, but now it has become a worldwide trend for all ages. Ever since it opened to anyone with a valid email address, Facebook has become a humongous business with over 550 million users. So large that in any given any given minute, over 1,700,000 actions are performed, stated by Time Magazine, as you can see here. Um, it grows on an average of 700,000 members per day. So Facebook is really big, obviously. If it were a country, it would be the third largest in the world. So with that big of a company, there are bound to be a few issues, and one of those issues has to do with privacy. Uh, Facebook has faced several lawsuits involving member privacy and has had to readjust their settings a number of times. Time, mag Time Magazine suggests that Facebook didn't even allow users to change their privacy settings until Mark Zuckerberg experienced privacy issues himself. Only once his personal private photos were shown to the public did he offer to change those. Um, issues at all. Um, and even with privacy settings now, you should really act as if everything that you post is accessible to the public. Um, my friend Sarah is what I would call a Facebook creeper. Uh, she can find out a ridiculous amount of information um, on just by looking at statuses and photos and things like that. You should see how much information she'll get on a guy that she thinks is cute. It's really kind of creepy. Like, I don't know how she does it. But there are people out there that literally will stalk you on Facebook, so you need to be careful. Um, not only are people worried about what information is visible to the public, phishing is also a rising concern as well. And phishing is when people try to um, get your account information, get like passwords and that sort of thing. Um, according to time.com, the number of phishing attacks on social network sites have increased dramatically in the last few years. In the first three months of 2009 alone, over 6,400 attacks were reported. Ryan McGeehan, Facebook's Incidents Response Manager, says that hackers set up websites that look just like Facebook, except instead they, um, they track your keystrokes so they are trying to get your password information and that sort of thing. This is why you always need to make sure you never use the same passwords for Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff that you would use for like online banking or anything that's really important to you, because that's how most people get information. It's just by Facebook passwords and they use the same password and then you get all your bank information like that. Um, another negative Facebook has had on society has to do with relationships. And I know this sounds odd because Facebook is supposed to help keep your relationships alive, but it's actually um, a cause for divorce. Excuse me. Um, according to Bottom Line Magazine, Facebook is a growing cause of divorce. It even quotes that some law firms they quote as many 20% of the divorce petitions they work with quote the social networking site as a factor of divorce. Um, another another divorce place in the United Kingdom, Divorce Online, reported that the word Facebook appeared late last year about one in every five petitions that they deal with, including um, regarding divorce. Um, one of the reasons why Facebook is correlated with divorce is because people will express what they think in all their deeper, innermost feelings a lot quicker than they would in face-to-face in, uh, -face conversations. This is called hyper-personal relationships. People kind of feel as if online relationships are sort of like a fantasy world, and they don't have to worry about everyday, um, everyday worries. So they tend to click with each other and make deeper connect 
deeper connections a lot quicker than they would in real life. <clears throat> okay, so the biggest way Facebook has impacted society, though, is the amount of time you spend online. I said Sarah is a Facebook creeper, and she's obsessed with Facebook. She's on constantly. Like, she always has it. And it's because Facebook is everywhere you go. It's not only on her computer, but it's on her, it's on her iPod, it's on her Blackberry, it's Nook, everywhere you go you can get to Facebook. Um, so people are becoming addicted to it. One recent study done at Oxygen Media and Lightspeed Research concluded that one third of the women surveyed, 18 to 34, will check their Facebook in the morning before even brushing their teeth. Um, of this 1600 survey, 21 admitted that they will wake up in the middle of the night just to check their Facebook. <laughs> yes. um, this is called Facebook Addiction Disorder, or FAD. Google has already had over 600,000 hits for the newly coined term. Um, people that have this addiction neglect other aspects of their life, especially students. Um, a new study says that college students who are Facebook users get 20% lower grades than those that don't use Facebook. Um, the study revealed that Facebook users have a typical grade point average of 3.06, while non-users had a GPA of 3.82. It's a big difference. So next time you're online or trying to do homework, you should probably sign off and do your homework because there will still be 550 million people when you're done studying that you can talk with when you get back back to the computer. Um, I mean, Facebook really is a huge distraction. Even while writing this outline on Facebook, I was distracted by Facebook. So really try your hardest to sign off. I know I have problems doing that too, but really should try to sign off and do other things first and then get back on. Anyways. Um, in summary, Facebook is an incredible tool that you can use for fun, friendships, or whatever you like, but don't let it take over your life. Um, don't be like Sarah and creep on people just because you think they're cute. Don't let it, like, consume your life. Don't let it negatively affect your relationships, learning, or privacy. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Facebook is bad. I love it. But I hope that after hearing all this new information about the website, you'll be a little more cautious.